Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Software Development with C++. So in this episode of this series, we're going to be talking about recursive use of make. So it's often the case that we're working with projects that are going to build multiple different executables or libraries. Now in situations like this, um, you know, we often don't have all of our code for these different components in the exact same directory. And we often want to have, say, multiple different make files in these different directories. Now, how exactly do we handle something like this, right? Where do we exactly call make from? So this is where this recursive use of make comes in. So all we really mean by recursive use of make is that we're going to be calling make from within our make files, right? So we're going to see how we can build these kind of multi-directory uh, projects today, um, you know, with a couple simple examples. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go into this uh, zero make, this first example. And a lot of the code in here should look somewhat familiar. What we're going to be doing is building a couple uh, shared libraries here. And these are the you know, pretty much the exact same uh, pieces of code that we looked at in the previous episode of this series um, where we looked at building shared libraries. So we can go ahead and go into, say, one of these subdirectories like int math. And you can see we just have a couple simple source files here of different functions, right? So something like add.cpp that you know, implements some simple you know, integer add function. Likewise, we also have, you know, some simple integer uh, multiplication function as well here. Now, within this directory, we also have a make file, right, to build this shared library. So we'll go ahead and open up this make file. And it's pretty simple, right? We're just reusing a lot of the ideas that we saw in the previous few episodes um, on GNU make. So here, right, our you know, primary target that we want to build is this libintmath.so, right, the shared library. But that's going to depend on building these two pieces of object uh, code first, add.o and multiply.o. So those are going to be our prerequisites. Our recipe for this library is pretty simple. We're just going to call g++-shared right on our prerequisites and build our target here, which is the shared library. Then the rest of our rules are pretty simple. We have a rule for building our object code for you know, add.o right, with FPIC, right, turning on this position independent code. And likewise, the same for multiply.o. And then we have our uh, phony target uh, clean here. So our rule for cleaning up after ourselves, deleting our library and also our object code. Now, along with this integer math library, we also have an almost identical floating uh, point math library. But this really could be any other kind of executable or library that we want to build here. The key point here is that we just have um, two different directories with different targets that we're trying to build, right? So in this case, right, if we open up our make file here, right, our you know, rules are pretty much exactly the same. The big difference is we're just building this libfloatmath.so with the uh, you know pieces of object code or source files that are in this directory for these floating point add and multiply functions here. And likewise, we have a similar kind of clean rule here to delete our libfloatmath um, shared library and object code. So how do we handle something like this, right? Do we just go into every directory and call make, right, in order to build these targets? Well, we don't have to do that. Instead, we can invoke make from within our make file. So let's go ahead and open up this make file, right, that's in the top level directory here, right? So we have float math and int math here, and then we have a make file as well, right, inside of this root directory. So we'll go ahead and open up this uh, make file. And you can see it's overall pretty simple here. And we're just going to use a basic idea that we want to loop over these different directories that we want to build here. So we're going to create a variable from within our make file here called subdirs, and it's just going to contain the different directories uh, we have that we want to build, right? So this int math directory and float math directory. Then we're going to just go ahead and create a rule called uh, with the target libraries here. So we want to build our shared libraries. And all we're going to have for our recipe right, for this rule is just a simple loop. So we're just going to do for directory in our subdirectories, right, this variable that we created, we're going to call make here. So the way that we call make from within make files is using this special variable uh, make here. And then we're going to pass it dash C and the directory we want to run here, right, the ones that we're looping over, right, in this first part of this for loop. So that's going to be the entirety of what we're doing here. So a, a one, I guess, special thing to note here, this dash C. So this dash C is an option for make uh, to change directory, right, before calling make, right? So what we're really doing here is we're changing our directory 
into one of these sub deers, and then we're invoking make, right? That's what we're getting with this dash C option. Now, likewise, we've done something very similar with our make clean, right? We still have our same kind of clean target down here, um, except this time, right, instead of just you know, calling or removing things directly um, from within this file, we're going to do the same kind of looping over our subdirectories, and we're going to call make by, uh, with changing the directory into, you know, one of these subdirectories and then invoking clean in there. So pretty much the exact same code as for building our libraries, but we've added clean to the end, right? So we're specifically calling that clean uh, rule in those make files in those subdirectories. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this works. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here and we can go ahead and run make or make libraries. So if we go ahead and call make, you can see exactly what's going on. So uh, from within that uh, rule, right, we, we're running this recipe here where we're looping over our different subdirectories. So you can see it's for deer in int math and float math, and it shows what we're doing. So you can see the first thing we do, right, because we're using this dash C option, we enter one of these directories here. So we enter our int math directory, and then we call make inside of that directory, and that goes ahead and builds our library here by first building our prerequisites and then our shared library. Then it leaves that directory after we've built that target and it goes into our next directory, which will be that float math directory. And it does the same thing, right? It builds these uh, uh, prerequisites for our libfloatmath.so library that we're trying to build before building our library here. And then it leaves that directory again, right? So we successfully built our entire project with these multiple, di with these two different libraries, right? With um, these nested make files here. So all we really had to do was do something like loop over our different subdirectories that we wanted to build, right? And call make, right, for those subdirectories. Now, this certainly works, right? This gets the job done in terms of building our libraries. And in fact, also, you know, we can see that uh, make clean also works. So if we take a look at one of these uh, directories here, like float math, you can see the object code and our, our shared library in here. You can see that we can run uh, make clean and it does the same kind of thing of entering directories, calling our clean function um, or our clean rule and then leaving right for both of our directories here. Uh, we're doing the same kind of looping and you can see that that, that of course cleans everything up. Um, but this isn't necessarily the best way to go about right this recursive use of make here. So let's open up this make file again and see what uh, might be the issue here. So functionally, we don't really have anything wrong here uh, in, in terms of you know, what we're doing. We're just building libraries one by one, uh, but that's kind of exactly the thing. We're building things one by one here. We have a single rule where we're building each of our subdirectories serially, right? So we have to wait until we finish building int math before we build uh, float math, even though we don't have uh, really a dependency between these two. Ideally, we'd like to uh, compile these in parallel if we can, right? One of the big things we can do in make is we can invoke make in parallel and compile things uh, concurrently. So let's see how we can kind of reformat this make file uh, to make it a little more amenable to parallelism, right? For our different directories that we're trying to build. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here and we'll go to our other example, this one make, and we can see how we've updated our make file here, right? In float math, right, this directory, as well as this int math directory are identical, right? We have made zero changes to these nested make files or the source code. So let's go ahead and open up our make file. So some things look pretty similar, right? So we're still creating a directory called, or a uh, variable called subdeers here for int math and float math. And then we also have our clean function down here where we're looping over different directories, but we're doing something a little bit different with how we write our rules, right? For making our subdirectories. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're still going to have uh, this target libraries here, but we're going to make it uh, dependent um, on the subdeers, right? We're going to list these subdeers as prerequisites we want to build first. And then we're going to write a rule specifically for um, these subdirectories, right? So for each of our subdirectories here, so we're going to have multiple different rules here, right? Because we and you know because we have multiple different uh, names here in this variable. So for each of these subdirectories, we're going to call make on that target here. So while this looks like a single rule here, it's actually going to be expanded out into multiple rules that we can then run in parallel here. And we're going to mark this as phony, right, for these subdirectories, because um, 
you know, this directory int math and float math already exist. So if we didn't have phony here, make would just say, hey, these directories exist. Clearly, they've already been built here. Um, so, you know, we have to mark this as phony to make sure that this make actually runs. Um, okay, so that's our main change that we're going to do here. So, right, instead of doing this kind of looping thing like we're still doing for clean here, what we're instead going to do is uh, write rules for our individual directories here. But we can do that by just using our variable here. This will automatically create our different rules for us. And because now building our directories, you know, int math and float math have their own rules, we can now run them in parallel, right? There's of course gonna be caveats here if you actually do have dependencies between your different directories, but you can express those uh, dependencies just like we have before using prerequisites. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we call make this time, right? And you can see we get the same kind of effect that we did originally. Uh, so you can see here we have, um, you know, first int math gets built, right, by building the prerequisites and then building our shared library, right? We enter, we build the prerequisites, our library, and then we leave that directory. And then we do the exact same kind of thing for float math here, right? So you see we have these two different rules we're running here. So one with make dash C on int math and one make dash C on float math here. These are really two different rules now rather than a single rule that's doing that looping inside of the recipe. Okay, so that's gonna be a little bit of the basics on this recursive use of make. So how do we handle the case where we have uh, nested directories with their own respective make files here? How do we call make uh, from within make files? Um, so all we really need to do is use that special variable, this dollar sign make here, um, and then we can use this dash C to say change in this directory and then call make say on that specific directory. Now, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. Uh, below the video, I'll make sure to link this section of our, um, this GNU make documentation here from gnu.org, specifically the section on recursive use of make. And as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.